all systems go. Clear for liftoff. What is going on, Shipping Nation YouTube station? It's tax day. Hopefully, all y'all out there got your taxes submitted. Lucky me, the procrastination in me. I got mine submitted this morning. I was dealing with that. Yeah, wait until the last day. You, you love to see that. But hey, we're bringing you the winners on this tax day, April 15th here. We're riding hot over here at Shipping Nation, all sports included. But how much? Happy Monday, brother. How was your weekend? Bring you in right away, man. What's going on, brother? Yeah, no, weekend was good. I have to uh, I have to come on here and eat a little bit of crow, man. You talked about it all Friday, how Gaussman was horrible chalk. I pounded the table for Gaussman. Hey, tip of my cap to Nades. He was all over that, talking about the VLO being down. So hats off to Nades for nailing that. Hey, my wallet's a little lighter, too. I lost a bet to Nades. And, man, I'll give, I'll give uh, more credit to Nades. Absolutely crushing it over here at the Nation I think back-to-back $2,000 days for you, so congrats to that. We had a million-dollar winner, and the uh, uh, PGA Street was awesome to see. But, uh, yeah, great job on those NFL your or, NBA, or MLB. Your core has been smashing. So, yeah, great weekend, and let's talk about today. And uh, I'm going to be telling your core today, man, because you've been on fire. Yeah, I've been uh, been on a good little run here. Obviously, if you guys uh, have, have followed my content, I put up a core play, a slate plan twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. I got the slate plan up already for Shipping Nation subscribers. Talk about some of my favorite stacks, favorite pitchers in there. Give a little synopsis of some one-offs and some value guys to look at. And then obviously a little, little briefing of the overall slate setup. Did that on Friday. Talked about Gossman a lot. Don't want a victory lap too much. But come in on Sunday. Threw a nice little, had a little run there. Um, made a nice, m- nice little profit there. Had a good, uh, good earlier in the week as well. Wednesday or Tuesday, I forgot the day. Um, shipped another two thousand dollars or not. So it's been, it's been good over here. Um, again, I play two teams a night, so I, I typically drop the bonus core in the Discord for the members as well. And you s- said it, million dollar shipper at the Masters, a founding family member there on a single bullet in the mega churn. 1183 with the million dollars in his pocket. He posted a nice message in the Discord there. Said he's hey, not very active in the Discord, but said once uh, Tambo and Hoop started this company way back when last season, knew it was going to be something special. Stuck with us from the start, hence the green name there, Fonic family member. Shipped himself a million dollars. Mondo, Kuzmat, Mark F, everybody else, right in the Discord that had incredible weeks in the Masters PGA Streets. We got you covered there. Plenty of other members we can't showcase on here, just showcasing some of the highest ones. And, man, pretty sure anybody out there watching would love a little million dollars in their DK balance, in their pocket. If you guys want to, get in right now. Use that promo code HOOP15. Get you 15% off the all-access monthly all-sports package. Brings it down to $2 a day. We got you covered for the NBA playoffs. NFL when it returns, the remainder of the PGA season, MMA, big UFC 300 card. We had a lot of members in the Discord do well with that UFC 300 card, NASCAR, college football, including other sports, including other bonus cores. You heard multiple times we got the projections, content, tools, that. But it's more the community, and it's more members winning, not just us posting screenshots, multiple members winning each and every single slate. Promo code HOOP15 gets you 15% off for life, any package you do choose. Check out these screenshots. Maybe you will be the next screenshot we showcase on one of these shows. If not, just go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a ton. How much we're going to do like we always do. We're going to talk pitching first. We're going to go 8K and above, and then we're going to go value range. After that, we'll go game by game, talking hitters, talking bats, talking stacks. Before we do, we got a couple guys, a couple familiar faces in the chat here, a couple new faces as well. Appreciate everyone tuning in. If you guys could, just hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Phil's in here. Richie Smalls, my guy Newens, Jake Swales, Nate, Parabay, Gator Nation, Adam, everyone in here. Appreciate you guys. Smarty said the slate plan is fire. Appreciate that, Smarty. Spent a lot of time on that. Looking forward to to running this slate here tonight. Hamish, I'll kick it over to you. 
8K and above pitching. I want to throw out a couple names to you. Down at the bottom, we're going to talk about, I want you to bring up Sonny Gray. I want you to bring up George Kirby. And up at the top, 11K, $1,600 more than anybody else on the slate. Tyler Glass now coming off his 14Ks. Now gets a matchup here against Washington, which isn't a great strikeout matchup, but man, Glass now has to have arguably the highest ceiling on the slate. Love me some Glass now tonight, but where are you looking at this top tier on pitching? Yeah, should be should be an interesting slate for sure. Pitching, I think there's some good pitchers tonight. As I mean, you obviously have Glass now coming off a, <clears throat> I think a 70 plus a Fanduel performance. I think it was 50 plus DK performance. You said at 14 strikeouts. Gets a, a team that in in the in years past has been a little pesky striking out this Nationals team. Uh, I, I still think you can get by with them, but you said at eleven thousand uh, dollars, you're going to find the bats to play with them, right? You got to play two pitchers, so you got to find him another quality pitcher, and then some bats that are some cheap value. I'm going to be lower on Glass now tonight on DK just for that simple fact that hey, I got to find two pitchers. I don't know if I want to pay eleven K for him on Fanduel. I still think he's squarely in play where we haven't projected at almost 47-plus points. So Glass now squarely in play. My number uh, two pitcher, two, I'll say I'll call him 2A and 2B from the same game. You got Frankie Montas taking on this Mariners team he's, he's very familiar with, and then George Kirby at home in his home ballpark. You said in the slate plan, not walking anybody. They're both striking out people pretty well, and both of these teams strike out at an alarming clip, both over 30% on the season one at home versus right-handed pitching, the other one on the road versus right-handed pitching. Nates, I like Frankie Matos and George Kirby when you consider price. I like them up there with Glass now, like I said, 2A and 2B for me. And then the last two I want to touch on, Joe Musgrove. I like Joe Musgrove going into Milwaukee, taking this Brewers team that's been red hot. I think they come back home. I think Musgrove can neutralize them at 8,600. Don't mind that. And then Sonny Gray, another interesting one to talk about. Uh Taking on his former his former teammates, probably not didn't play with any of these guys, but he came up as an Oakland Athletic. He's going into this this park, great ballpark upgrade. My concern with him, Nades, sixty six pitches in his first start out from a rehab start. How many can we get out of him to pay off that price tag? Would kind of be where I'm at. I think he's got a great match with this ace team striking out a bunch at home versus right handed pitching. But for a hundred dollars more, I'll be going to Joe Musgrove over Sonny Gray. That'll do it for me kind of in this top range. Didn't mention Merrill Kelly. I think he's fine as well, but he, he would be lower on the list for me than those others I just mentioned. Yeah, no, excellent breakdown here. Um, I'm going to touch on Glass now. Um, I, I get the reason, right? He is 11K. I do like him. He's not a lock button by any means by me. Um, the, this Nationals team can be pretty pesky, but there is a lot of strikeouts in that lineup overall in, in general. Just looking at the lineup, I mean, just this season, um, Manessa strikes out at 24%. Lipscomb, if he's in there, 27%. 30% for Rosario and Gallo. So if those guys are in there, those are strikeouts. And, I mean, he strikes each of those guys out two times. Even if he gives up a couple runs, he's got the K stuff, as we saw, right? 14 strikeouts is in his last start. Not only that, the weather out there in L.A. is definitely pitcher-friendly as well. Um, going to be about 60 degrees out in uh, Dodger Stadium out on the West Coast there. Um and he should have run support behind him as well, like the Dodgers a ton in terms of an offense here tonight. So Glass now can't really poke any holes in him outside of the price at 11K. So where he fits, he's definitely my SP1. I want to be overweight on him um, if I was doing MME. Um, he's probably going to be about 35 to 40% owned for good reason. Um, I, I would like to be probably about 50, 60 65% in, in MME is kind of where I would look. Um, I just His ceiling is, is unmatched on the slate. My next favorite pitcher is actually going to be Sonny Gray. Um, yeah, I get it. He only did throw 64 pitches. I see him getting up to about 75, 80 pitches here. Now gets a great matchup. Park upgrade out there in Oakland against this lineup in Oakland, who this year against right-handed pitching in their limited sample, but most of these guys have 24 to 30 plate appearances against righties in Oakland. They're striking out over 32% against right-handed pitching. Sonny Gray comes in with 28% strikeout rate this season. Doesn't give up hard hits at all. Has good control, everything. I mean, I love this matchup for Sonny Gray at 8,500. He's my favorite secondary SP2. Then I'm going to go to George Kirby and then um, Frankie Montas, pairing both those pitchers. Those are my top four in this top tier. like both of them. Really like lineups where you pair up Montas, you pair up Kirby. I get it. I've been playing the Reds a ton. Reds won me a ton of money yesterday. 
won me a ton of money this week, but it's a different spot, uh, a different spot here going out to Seattle, going to a pitcher's park, facing a good real life pitcher in George Kirby, who just had limits hard contact, limits home runs. Same thing on the other side for Montas. So I like those two guys a ton. So it's glass now number one for me, de facto number one, just like everybody else on the slate. Don't really have a hot take like I did in Gosman on Friday, but I'm okay going with him. Then I'm going Sonny Gray, then George Kirby, then Montas is kind of the top tier for me. No other interest in any Lugo, any Bassett, no Merrill Kelly, no Musgrove, any of that for me personally. I just don't like attacking this Brewers team. Brewers are young. These guys are playing with a chip on the shoulder. Not only that, when they get on, they're st stealing bases. That leads into trouble. So Joe Musgrove, I like Kirby much more. I like Gray much more. So no reason for me to go in the middle and play some Musgrove for me personally. Let's jump down to the sub 8K. I want to throw out a couple guys. Number one, Ross Stripling in that good park over there against the St. Louis team who hasn't been very um, good to, to start the season. Goldschmidt, Gorman, Arnado, a lot of strikeouts up at that top half. So he's down all the way at 6K. Allows you to pretty much do whatever you want in bats. Obviously, we have Houston. We have Atlanta on the slate. We have the Dodgers. We have high-powered offenses that everybody wants to play. Talk about Stripling. Talk about any of these other guys down low. Luis Gill and his command control issues, but obviously has a ton of strikeout upside there. And then any other one down here at the lower tier that you're looking at. Yeah, I was just looking at this lower tier earlier today, and, man, it's tough to play any of these guys. Um, I think I'm going to be out on all these. I mean, you said Ross, Ross Stripling. That would be the one if you needed to. Obviously, if you're going to if you're going to pair uh, or if you're going to play – Glass now, you're going to need some salary. So I think Stripling is fine. I'm not doing Gill. I'll let you talk on Gill, and I'll talk the reasons when we get to the game by game why I don't like Gill. But, yeah, none of these other guys for me, uh, it's all going to be top tier uh, players for me. I'll be doubling up, like you said, Montas Kirby special on DK. But, yeah, none of these lower guys for me, I don't think. Yeah, no. Uh, I do want to throw one other guy out here, Joe Ross. Um, he ranks very good in our starting pitching rankings over here. I trust our content. I trust our tools. We're going to talk about it all season long in MLB. Um, the, the advanced lineups page and the, uh, the the starting lineups page with the advanced data where we rank our hitters. We rank our pitchers based on stat cast data, expected lineup, ISO, everything, and, and overall puts these pitchers into our ranking. Joe Ross is up the board quite a bit at 7,300. I don't mind him. Um, he's got the eighth best strikeout rate this season um, on the slate in terms of all these pitchers there. It's not a great strikeout matchup against San Diego. It's a pretty tough matchup, but at 7,300 at virtually unowner, no ownership, I don't think he's the craziest play, but if I'm punting down here, I'm just going to go to Ross Stripling at 6K and just hope he gets me, I don't know, 12 to 15 DraftKings points as an SP2, and then my bats can kind of do the rest for me. So do you like Stripling down here? I do like Luis Gill just from the strikeout. I mean, this guy – if he can just limit his walks, I mean, some sort, find some sort of command, this guy could be an elite pitcher with his strikeout stuff. I mean, a huge strikeout arm, big guy, but, man, he just walks everyone. And then when you start walking guys, give free base runners, things turn into issue. But he is 7,400. So, for me, Ross Stripling, my favorite just due to the salary. Don't love him as a pitcher, but this Cardinals team hasn't impressed me. It's a good park for pitchers out there in Oakland. Not the greatest hitting weather either then Luis Gill, and then Joe Ross for me down here. But, yeah, to your point, I do want to double spend as much as possible here on this slate or leaving Glass now off and going to Montas Kirby pairing or Sonny Gray Kirby and one of, or, or a Montas, something like that um, allows you to do enough. There's enough value bats as well to make that work. So, typically, I try and avoid – um, the the gem the hidden gem in terms of pitching that's just how I've been approaching this this season um, and just getting different with my bats. But uh, go ahead and give your top five, and then we'll go game by game. All right, sorry, I was, I was replying to Rance in the uh, in the chat. Yeah, we, he said he played Butto yesterday, number two in our starting pitcher rankings. I know my guy Tambo was on him too. Forty nine DK points, absolutely lit it up. Yeah, for me, it's gonna, it's still going to be Glass now, number one. Uh, number two, A, two B for me, Frankie Montas and Kirby. If I had a lean, I would lean, I would lean a little bit more Montas than Kirby. Number four for me would be Joe Musgrove, and then number five for me, I, like I said, didn't talk a lot about him, but I, I still like him as a pitcher. Merrill Kelly, I have Merrill Kelly over Sonny Gray simply based on the fact that I don't think Sonny Gray is going to be in there long enough, uh, A, to get the quality start on Fanduel and potentially get the win on both sides. I don't think he gets six. 
Uh, so, yeah, so I would have Merrill Kelly ranked above Sonny Gray. Yeah, you could might as well. You, you take your eraser right now and erase Musgrove right out of your rankings um, because that's one you don't need to, to put on there. I mean, if you if you want to, to, to negative points on there or uh, or an SP2 in your roster that uh, is going to hurt your team, play Joe Musgrove here tonight. Um, not for me, but, hey, that's how much it won't be a little show with us too with a little, a little friendly bickering. I'll take multiple other guys over Musgrove. But for my rankings, Tyler Glass. I'm not the core. My guy, Joe Musgrove, going into that state. What state? I don't even know where he's going. Not a good state, I'm assuming. Got to go in there and dominate whoever he's playing tonight. Yeah, whoever he's playing, right. One of the one of the hottest teams in baseball. I mean, this team is loaded with the young talent. It's not a homer take. It's just the spat, facts, man. And uh, you can play Joe Musgrove. I'll take Sonny Gray. I'll take Kirby. I'll take Montas. Shoot, I'll even take Luis Gill over him. Um, uh, on this slate is what I'm looking at. But my rankings, Glass now number one for me, Sonny Gray number two, going to go George Kirby three, Montas four, and then Luis Gill is going to be number five for me. Close close sixth and seventh would be Stripling and Joe Ross is kind of where I'm looking. But let's throw it over. Let's go game by game here before we do again. If you guys are just tuning in now, use that promo code HOOP15, gets you 15% off. Any membership package, all access pass, takes it down the monthly all sports package to $58 a month, which is less than $2 a day. Here's some screenshots from the weekend. Again, one more time from the Masters, single bullet Millie Shipper by our founding family member, Churn, who's been with us at Shipper Nation over here since the start, coming up on the one year anniversary over here at the Nation. Got our guy, Mark F. Continue to crush it over there. And then our guy Mondo in there shipping 100 stacks as well. Again, promo code HOOP15. 15, 15% off any package you do choose. Hamwich, saw you throw a comment up there. Do you want to make a little uh, little commentary on that before we go game by game and talk New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays? I threw two up there. My guy King of Smag backing me. Then I get all the Wisconsinites in here, dog and ham, ham, the MK, MKE hater. I got, hey, Gator Nation. Oh, man, some girl from Milwaukee. Man, you broke my heart, sweetie. But, yeah, so uh, that's why I don't like I don't like the, the cheese state, man. She did me dirty. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't. But, uh, yeah, no, all good and fun. Love me some Brewers. Love me some Giannis, man. Come on, Giannis. Get back for the playoffs, big guy. Let's go. It's playoff time, Giannis. Yeah, I don't think you can say you love Giannis. I mean, you shit on him all year long on the NBA show. So there's no way you can put love and Giannis in the same sentence coming out of your mouth. But let's go ahead and talk about the Yankees and the Blue Jays here. Bassett Hound on the mound. Luis Gill. I liked Luis Gill and his huge strikeout. I mean, he's got a 37% strikeout rate. If you can control the zone a little bit and just limit these walks, I mean, this guy would absolutely nuke a slate. Hopefully he hits here tonight because I like him. None of these Blue Jays interest me. The back half of the lineup all strikes out over 25% against right-handed pitching at home. So no Blue Jays for me. These Yankees, I think, are, are interesting against Bassett and his, his hard hits, overall league average strikeout rate. So touch, touch on these Yankees, any Blue Jays for you. Both these teams have scored, they implied to score right around four to four and a half runs tonight. Yeah, it should be an interesting game, and, and Gill's got some nasty stuff. I mean, just a, a small sample, obviously, but in his uh, in 2024, striking out over 30% from both sides of the plate. But I'm going to get a little contrarian tonight, Nates, in large field GPPs. I love me some Blue Jays as a contrarian stack. Really just one through five is where I'd go. I'd cut it off at Biggio, assuming he's batting fifth. But I think if they can get to Gill, and the reason I like these Blue Jays is this Yankees bullpen is taxed. They had a doubleheader on Saturday, played an extra inning game yesterday. I think if they can get Gil, get to Gil early, I think they leave him in a little bit longer to rest some of those arms. And, hey, these Blue Jays, they've been known to go off. You got Vlad. You got Justin Turner. You got um, Bichette. I mean, the list goes on and on. Not not implied to score many runs. All should be sub 10% ownership. I like those Blue Jays as a contrarian stack tonight, taking on this Yankees team. I guess it's called a, you can call it a rivalry, both in the AOE. So rivalry renewed. I think the Yankees worn down. And then on the other side, it would be Aaron Judge for me, and that's about it. All rise yesterday, crushed one, what, 470 yesterday. Uh, he's a great, obviously a great player. It would just be an Aaron Judge one-off for me. No Yankees stack. Someone mentioned that Bassett generally does well against the Yankees. Yeah, I, th I think he does okay. But, yeah, I'm not stacking this Yankees team. I just don't like the guys down there at the bottom. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally not stacking either side of this game. Definitely no Blue Jays for me. I get the reasoning. Um, if I were going to them, I'd go to the guys that have a high walk rate. 
Um, looking at that numbers on the season, Justin Turner, Springer, Guerrero, and IKF down there in the eight spot. Little wraparound stack, I think, would be good. Eight one four, throwing a boba shot there. You got a nice little five man wraparound stack. That's be something I would look at if I was going to stack these guys. But with Biggio striking out at thirty percent, Varsho right around thirty percent, Kirmir up at forty percent, IKF even around thirty percent. Against the stuff and Gill, I just hope he can command his uh, his pitches here tonight. Get his walk rates down a little bit. I think he can definitely post a big number as an SP2. So no Blue Jays for me. Yankees, you can play Aaron Judge each and every single slate. Um, Juan Soto, you can play every slate. But outside of that, no interest in going to any of these guys. Don't really like the spot. So uh, this is a game from Bat's perspective that I'm lower on. Can't play them all. This is one that I am don't have a ton of interest in. But let's go to the next game here, which... Typically, I don't say this too much. I actually do have interest in this game from a stack perspective on both sides of the plate here. It's the Pirates. It's the Mets. Martin Perez, Adrian Hauser, two terrible pitchers, in my opinion, on the mound. Definitely think Martin Perez is better. But you get Adrian Hauser in New York against the Pirates team who these Pirates, I wrote it in the slate plan, saw Adrian Hauser a ton last season. Fared pretty well against him each and every single time. And Hauser looked absolutely horrendous in his first start. So I like me some Pirates here as my low-owned stack of the night. Give me some O'Neill Cruz. Give me some of these lefties. Wrap it around. Add in the guys for that make the positions work in terms of your roster structure. But talk about this one, the Mets, the Pirates. Any interest in terms of bats here in New York? Yeah, no, no, let's start on the Mets side. No interest there. Uh, Martin Perez, you know, respectable, I guess, if you will. MLB pitcher gives up a lot of ground balls, which obviously we don't want to pick on ground ball pitchers. So I don't think I'll have any Mets. If you wanted to do a, a, an Alonzo one off, certainly could do that. But yeah, I'm with you. These Pirates uh, taking on former Brewer great Adrian Hauser, that is. You didn't give him his credit. He's striking out. I know it's, it's early, it's, and he's thrown about 200 pitches this year, less than 10% of batters across the board. 4% from the left-handed side. So I certainly think some of these lefties are in play. Brian Reynolds, O'Neill Cruz, Sawinski, if he's in the lineup. Um, McCutcheon, who hit his 300th home run yesterday, saw a cool video with him getting that ball back from a little fan yesterday. But, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Nades. I don't know if I'd call my sneaky stack, but certainly don't hate that as the Bucks take on Adrian Hauser, who just can't strike anybody out. So, yeah, give me those guys, 27 ounce, full of them. Yeah, I'm with you on Nades with that one. Yeah, I like that. Love me some Brian Reynolds. Love me some McCutcheon. Henry Davis, Jack Suwinski, my big boy, Rowdy Telez, hoops boy, Rowdy Telez. Hitting in the cleanup spot at just 3,200 there. It does take up a valuable first base position, but he's got a 4 of 4 expected ISO against right handed pitching on the road this season. Give me these Pirates. I like the Pirates a ton. And then on the Mets side, I like a little wraparound of my former Brewer Great, another Brewer Great, starting alongside Adrian Hauser on the bump. Tyrone Taylor, historic lefty masher. Love me some Tyrone Taylor in the outfield at 2.7K. Hitting eighth here tonight, a little Harrison Bader at 2.9K. Hits lefties pretty well as well. You got a nice little two-man stack there for under $6,000 in terms of your roster. Love me that little mini stack there. Obviously, Pete Alonzo, one of the best first baseman plays on the slate. I wrote him up in the slate plan as an elite one-off. The dude just smashes lefties and smashes Martin Perez. So, like me some of these mats more as a mini stack. Um, Tyrone Taylor, my favorite guy, followed by Alonzo. I think Bader's fine as well. Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, those guys are fine as well. But the Pirates, I like all these guys. O'Neill Cruz, Reynolds, Rowdy Telez, Sawinski is where I would start, then fill out around what fits in your roster. So do like me some Pirates here tonight. Let's jump to the next game here, Kansas City, Chicago. I do want to pull up the weather in this one being in Chicago here. Looking like about 60 degrees here. Wind kind of blowing across the field, maybe slightly out to right field at about 10 miles an hour. So not a crazy weather game. There's not a lot of weather overall in the slate in general. That's going to sway decision making. But talk about Kansas City. Talk about White Sox. Nastrini on the mound versus Seth Lugo. And Nastrini, this guy just has looked absolutely horrendous. I think he's actually making – I think this guy's making his major league debut, but his minor league numbers have looked horrible. Love me some Royals here tonight. Royals, one of my favorite stacks. I've been playing these Royals a ton. They've been printing money, and you got to talk about it. Bobby Witt, one of the hottest players, one of the cheat codes in terms of daily fantasy sports. Power speed combination at a shortstop position. Love me some Bobby Witt. Love me some Royals here tonight, but where are you going? Yeah, you had those Royals on your team the other night. Your boy Vinny P cut up for you. I think you got what 40 some odd DK points. Help you get second in that in that in that in that uh entry. So yeah, they're gonna be 
popular tonight. And yeah, it starts with big, bad Bobby Witt. Just absolutely crushing right-handers on the road this season. So he's certainly in play. I'm going to be a little lower on the Royals than I normally would um, tonight. I, I just don't I don't like them away from their home ballpark. You call it Coors Field 2.0. So, yeah, going into this White Sox park, no thank you for me. And, you know, Seth Lugo is a guy that's not, you know, very good, striking out less than 15% on the season. But, man, this White Sox offense is just so bad, especially with Robert out. So, if you wanted to pick a one-off, I think you're looking at Andrew Vaughn or Gavin Sheets batting in that three or four hole tonight would be, kind of be where I'd limit it to. But, man, this game's more likely a cross-off outside of Bobby Witt as a one-off in Andrew Vaughn or Gavin Sheets. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, stay off my Royals because uh, these Royals are going to nuke here tonight. I mean, this guy struggles with fly balls and struggles with command, meaning to free base runners against the team um, that has been very patient at the plate. I mean, MJ Melendez – Fly ball guy, but also sees the ball well. He's averaging 10 or he's got about a 10% walk rate on the season. Vinny P's right there with him as well. Um, you got add in the likes of Bobby Witt, right? You got Nelson Velasquez at almost a 40 ball, 40% fly ball rate. I like me some Royals here tonight. Royals, one of my favorite stacks. They're not going to get a ton of ownership. A lot of the ownership is going to the Dodgers, going to the Astros, going to the Braves up at the top tier. Um, that I think these Royals get a little slept on here overall. A lot of people don't like playing them outside of Kansas City for a good reason, but it's just more of a bet on this Nastrini um, character making his major league start. Hasn't Major league debuts haven't gone very well for uh, for pitchers this season, and uh, I'm going to attack it with a hot Royals team overall. So I'm going to keep the train rolling with the Royals. White Sox side, no interest in any of these White Sox, just not going to attach – Attack Seth Lugo. Don't like this White Sox offense at all um, with the injuries that they're facing. So no White Sox for me. So you pop something up on the screen? Yeah, I was just yeah. saying that, uh, no Salvi tonight. Go click, put in there the no Perez. Yeah, so Salvi is out of the lineup. Free money. Freddie Furman is in the lineup uh, tonight batting eighth at the catcher position. Yeah, perfect. Good ad. Uh, Salvi was um, one of my favorite bats if I was stacking, obviously. But – Having Freddie Furman in there at 2,800 versus 4,400 allows to uh, more flexibility in your roster construction when you want to spend up on pitcher here tonight. So overall, still like the Royals, still like the Royals a ton here tonight in Chicago. Guaranteed 19 at bats is always a plus as well when you're stacking up a team. Let's talk about your favorite state. We're going to Milwaukee here. We're talking about the Milwaukee Brewers here. I'm going to call it Miller Park. Joe Ross on the mound, Joe Musgrove. You were stroking Musgrove earlier. I personally don't like Musgrove here tonight. I like me some red hot William Contreras, who continues to just absolutely smash. Christian Yelich is crushing. Reese Hoskins in there. Jackson Churro, complete absolute stud. 3,600, nice value bat there. Any interest in any Padres, any Brewers in this game here in Milwaukee? Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas is in line with me. They think the Brewers are only going to score three and a half runs tonight, one of the lowest totals on the slate. Musgrove about to shut this team down. Go ahead and lock and load that. And on the other side, Joe Joe Ross, not that familiar with Joe Ross. I think this uh, this Padres team has some pop, has some power uh, in this ballpark. Uh, Tatis, Cronenworth, Machado, High Don Kim, power, speed, Profar. He's, uh, what, what is he? He's – irrelevant or whatever the case may be. I like him. Sandra Bogart's batting lead up. I think this Padres team can do some damage tonight against Joe Ross. They get that extra at bat. Yeah, I like pairing them with Musgrove. I think gets the quality start and the win tonight in Milwaukee. Yeah, no, excellent breakdown there. I think some of these Padres bats are are good. Jake Cronenworth would be my favorite bat there at first base at 3,800. Projected to hit third here tonight. Manny Machado at 4-7. I still think that's a little soft. On his pricing for the talent that he has, you can play him at shortstop and third base as well, which is definitely nice. But don't want to stack up either one of these teams. I prefer to stack up the Brewers here, actually, just the way they're playing. They got cheap bats. Oliver Dunn, 3.4K. He's got some stolen base upside. William Contreras is one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. He's got a 484 expected ISO at home against right-handed pitching here. Now gets Musgrove, who on the season has a sub-20% strikeout rate, barrel rate up um uh, above league average as well so give me some William Contreras give me some Oliver Dunn give me some of these cheap guys down at the bottom Sal Fralix, Churros, Bryce Terangs to fit fill it out if you need a little mini stack there nice thing about these Brewers is they've been stealing bases as well that leads to a lot of points quickly in terms of fantasy scoring obviously with the new rules that baseball implemented last year 
definitely helps the stolen base numbers and the Brewers are not afraid to run. So don't hate some of these Brewers out on the Padres in terms of the stack. Don't really want a full five-man stack either side of this game, just more mini stacks for me personally. Let's jump to the next game here. I think this is a great game to stack up. Both these pitchers, you got Arigetti here um, that I don't think is ready to be a major league starter here for Houston. And then you got Darius Vines thr thrusted into a start here with the Spencer Strider injury, who now comes in to face one of the most plate disciplined teams in all of baseball with some of the most power in all of baseball here. Think this game is a shootout game here in Houston. Think we see fireworks. Love both these teams as full five man stacks, mini stacks. They are expensive. It is hard, but they do have cheaper guys at the bottom of the lot order that I talk about all the time. Travis DeArno, Orlando Arcia, Adam Duvall's got a fair price point. Same thing on the Astros, Abreu, McCormick, Jake Myers. Those guys are all fairly reasonably priced. Talk about Atlanta, talk about Astros, two pitchers that uh, I don't think are very good at all or not ready for the majors here and not proving themselves yet facing very elite offenses. Yeah, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly there. Yeah, I think it's a shootout. I think those ships are blasting off in Houston. I don't care if it's Darius Vines, Darius Rucker, or any other Darius. You're not stopping this Astros offense at home. You're Don Alvarez, absolutely crushing right-handed pitching at home on the season. Same goes for uh, same goes for Kyle Tucker, who's having a great start to the season at home. Uh, Jose Altuve, double dong yesterday. I think really one through nine on the Astros side is in play. And the same thing, you know, with uh, with those Braves. I mean, obviously you can play those guys every single night. Uh, uh, the Arrigetti guy was the guy that played your Royals team last time. And I think he gave up nine runs in the first inning. And the only thing you don't want is to face this Braves offense coming to your city when you got to pitch against them after just giving up nine runs in your first inning. I don't even think he got out of the first inning, Nades, if, I, if memory serves me, if memory serves me correctly. So, this game's going to shoot out really like your dong, probably my favorite piece, but I think you can stack one through nine. And then obviously any of the Braves, Acuna, man, I just feel like every time they play Nates, I feel like he's stealing one, two, three bases. He's not really, doesn't really have the power so far this year, but man, he's stealing bases like, like nobody's business. So yeah, give me all these guys, but you said it. Prices are going to be tough. You can't stack this game in play, in play glass now. So you're going to have to get creative with how you do it. Play those uh, seven, eight, nine guys like you always talk about. I think that it's squarely in play in this one. Yeah, not much to say. I think one through nine are definitely in play, definitely stackable from both sides of the plate here. I prefer the Braves a little bit more um, here. Um, I think the Braves and the Astros both in terms of stacks are a little bit lower than that Dodgers offense um, that we're going to talk about later facing uh, Mitchell Parker, another guy making his uh, debut here as well, which seems to be – Kind of the nature of the beast here on the slate, or, or not all of them making their debuts, but all very young pitchers that um, are, are making their debuts either out of injury or just out of sheer desperation, right, for for rotations due to due to other injuries um, that that happened before the start and uh, in, in spring training. So love both offenses. Not much more to say. My two favorite bats on the Astros side would be the two lefties, obviously Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, building around those, throwing in Altuve. Throwing a Jake Myers down there at 3,200. He's got good numbers, low strikeout rate overall. This Astros team striking out just 15% against right-handed pitching at home with an expected ISO north of 230. That leads to uh, to a lot of da daily fantasy points. So love the Astros, love the Braves. Not a hot take by any means. Got to be interesting on how to stack them up. You talk about it all the time, right? Going to the back half of that order. Leaving out the Acunas in a Braves stack, it's scary to do so, but – Get you contrarian because everyone that's going in is five man stack in the Braves. Majority of them are going to be with Ronald Acuna. So just little things you can get different there. Hey, real hey. quick, Tyler, I had it, I had it a little bit wrong. Hunter Brown was the one that couldn't get out of the first inning, but Arigetti did get lit up by the Royals, gave up seven runs in three innings against the Royals. It was not the Rangers, but yeah, Hunter Brown was the one that couldn't get out of the first. They got beat up back to back days. It was bad for the Houston Astros. Maybe you're an Astros fan. But they got beat up. But, yeah, they were both against the Royals. I said that he didn't get out of the first. It was actually Hunter Brown that couldn't get out of the first. So my apologies on that. Yeah, good uh, good chat. Always keeps us on our toes, so we appreciate that. While you guys are in the chat, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, appreciate that. Helps us out a ton. All these shows, we continue to bring you free each and every single day. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about – head out to Arizona. Talk about Merrill Kelly, Ben Brown on the mound. Ben Brown struggles with hard hit, struggles with some control, but does have good strikeout numbers. Now faces a pretty tough matchup overall against the D-backs, but 
looking at this roster, D-backs at home against right-handed pitching do have a lot of strikeouts here. I mean, McCarthy strikes out a lot, Blaze Alexander, Eugenio Suarez, even Kettle Marte up at the top has been striking out north of 30% against righties. Any interest in this side in terms of stacks, in terms of bats, D-backs are implied to score over four and a half runs here against Ben Brown. Yeah, this game's going to be a cross-up, Nates. Can't play them all. This will be one that I don't uh, pick on. I have a little bit of interest in Merrill Kelly. Cubs aren't striking out as much as they were last year against right-handed pitching. Uh, so I, I do I would lower my exposure on Merrill Kelly. Uh, but no Cubs for me. You may have a one-off or two that you like. Then on the other side, I mean, I don't really like these D-backs. Like I said, I'm going to cross it off, but you could certainly pick a Corbin Carroll off as power speed upside. Kettle Marte batting at the top of that lineup, but no full stacks for me on either side. Yeah, no, I'm not going to full stack either side. I do like some value one-offs, starting with Michael Bush at 3,400 first base for the Cubs. I mean, this guy just smashes righties, um, and he's super cheap. 3,400 should hit right around six or seven in that lineup. He's projected to hit sixth right now for the Cubs. I don't think he's craziest or a Christopher Morrell. I mean, Christopher Morrell was approaching 6K. Uh, much of last season, end of last season, he's 4,300, has tons of power against righties, so I don't think he's the craziest play either. Just those two guys for me, no other interest there. And then on the D-back side, I mean, a Christian Walker, Lords Guriel, that's about it. But not going to stack these teams up, um, just pulling one-offs, and that's it for me in Arizona. Let's jump to a game where I think you can do another little pair of both pitchers up and uh, hope, they, uh, hope they get out there and hopefully you get one pitcher – with the win at least, St. Louis, Oakland, pitchers ballpark here, stripling on the mound, Sonny Gray. I have interest in both these pitchers personally here, but neither of them are bulletproof by any means. I think I would rather go to some of these Cardinals bats against Ross Stripling clearly than to attack some of these athletics against Sonny Gray. But talk about St. Louis, talk about Oakland out in Oakland in this pitchers ballpark. Yeah, no ways for me, even though I don't have any interest in Sonny Gray, just strictly based on – his pitch count, but I think his limitations will be there. No real Cardinals for me. Just looking at numbers from last year, Ross Stripling was a reverse splits guy, struck out more lefties than righties. So naturally, I would have more interest in those righties. And we got two power righties in there, Arenado and Goldschmidt. Don't even hate Contreras in that situation. If you wanted to go full stack, obviously, you would have to get some lefties in there, which I think that's going to be contrarian. Especially in this ballpark, probably won't be full stacking the Cardinals, though, would try to be picking off a one-off in Goldschmidt or Arenado. And then, yeah, no A's for me. I made that mistake on Friday night, man. They're just tough to roster. Uh, so no A's for me against this Cardinals pitching staff, including Sonny Gray. Yeah, no, I think uh, Goldschmidt, for all the BVP truthers out there, I know that's always a hot take in baseball. It's just fun to look at there. But uh, Goldschmidt does uh, – is 7-4-19, two doubles, two home runs against – our guy Ross Stripling here. He hasn't shown the power this season, but at the end of the day, he's still one of the best hitters in baseball. So Paul Goldschmidt at 4,900, don't think he's crazy. It seems like a slate where first base is obviously loaded. Much like every single slate you talk about, first base is definitely a staple position in your roster. So you have to be cognizant of how you play it. Um, but I do think Paul Goldschmidt's fine. I don't hate uh, Arenado, Willis and Contreras, Lars Nupar. But outside of that, not going to stack either one of these teams. I like both pitchers enough. More Ross Stripling is just due to price and the matchup. This Cardinals team hasn't in, in, impressed me much. Still a lot of strikeouts there. Um, so long way of saying no bats, not the greatest ballpark either. So I'd rather play other teams more in better hitting environments than attack out in Oakland here. Let's talk about a game that I think is going to be an easy cross off for both of us. We like pairing these pitchers together a lot. We like both of these pitchers quite a bit. Montage, George Kirby out in Seattle. Another pitcher's ballpark here. Talk about this one. Yep, no much to say. Can't play them all. The red, the only thing I'll say, Reds implied to score less than three runs. So definitely won't be playing any of them. And then, yeah, not not taking on any of these Mariners uh, either. Just you know, a big believer in Montas. So, yeah, easy game to cross off for me. Yeah, the only bat I will mention is another first baseman. Surprise, surprise, Ty France. Pretty good numbers against righties. Power guy. Still super cheap. 3600 for the first base spot is definitely a value bat. Did write him up um, in, in the slate plan, I'm pretty sure, as a one-off. So I don't hate him. But outside of that, no interest in stacking up this guy. Reds made me a lot of money. Um, I'll definitely be playing the Reds a lot this season, but not going to be playing the Reds here against George Kirby out in Seattle. So 
no spot for me. But that takes us to the late night Dodgers here. It's not Friday, but it is a Monday here. Dodgers top stack on the board facing Mitchell Parker here. Seems like a pretty rough spot to, to come in and, and, and make a sp start here against a very patient, very power-filled lineup facing guys, Shohei Otani, Freeman, Will Smith, Mookie Betts. I mean, Teo Hernandez, the list goes on and on. Talk about this one. Talk about the Nationals. Talk about the Dodgers. Any interest in the Dodgers bats for you here tonight? Yeah, definitely no interest in the Nats. Love glass now. Obviously, tonight in Mitchell Parker, Sounds like he should be playing against the Kappa Sig fraternity team tonight, but yet he's taking on the LA Dodgers. It could get ugly for all ugly for all those uh, Parker fans out there. Yeah, Shohei, Mookie, the list goes on and on. The Dodgers should beat up this guy. Uh, eight plus runs is my call, Nades, against Mr. Parker, and they are on the winner tonight. Dodgers, my number one stack. If you head over to the nation, you can check out your slate plan too and see where you rank the Dodgers because I know you like them as well. Yeah, I love the Dodgers. This guy does have good strikeout stuff, but again, another one of those guys that has decent strikeout stuff, um, at least in his minor league numbers, but struggles with hard hit and uh, fly balls. And looking at this Dodgers lineup, seven of the nine hitters have fly ball rates over 30% between this year and last year against left-handed pitching. Mookie Betts, Chris Taylor, Will Smith, Monse, Hernandez, Freddie Freeman, Tio Hernandez, Love them all. There is some pinch hit concerns, obviously, with guys at the back half of that lineup, guys like Kiki Hernandez, right, um, that that likely come out after uh, after Parker gets beat out of this game, likely, um, when they bring in a righty out of there, a lot of splits guys down at the bottom. But for the most part, Mookie's safe, Otani, Freeman, Will Smith, Muncy, Tio Hernandez, I think all those guys are safe. Even James Altman, if he starts lefty-lefty, think he's safe. So love these Dodgers. Dodgers are my favorite stack of the night. They are expensive. Got to put them up against the Dodgers or got to put them up against the Astros and the Braves. Both those teams, I think we talked about them like both sides of that game. So with these three teams all equally priced in terms of overall stack for, for salary wise, I think enough of them take ownership from each other that you really don't have to worry about chalk versus not chalk. Whoever your favorite is, just go in and stack them. They all have similar matchups against pitchers that are kind of thrusted into major league starts or just thrusted in um, due to injuries, right, in that rotation like Argetti there. So overall, that's all nine games. We talked pitching. We talked stacks here. I think we broke it down pretty good. As always, our my slate plan's already live. My core's already up for Ship It Nation subscribers. I know Hoop's throwing his core up. You got your core up there. We'll have a cash core up there. Our lineups page is updated as the lineups get released. Projections as always. But – Hamlet, I'm going to throw it over to you. Home run call of the evening. Where are you going for a bomb here tonight? I'm going to give out two. Gonna, you, don't, you don't necessarily have to. Hopefully, I don't steal your guy. But I'm going to go two, three in Houston. Your dong Alvarez goes deep. Kyle Tucker follows him up back to back. Kyle Tucker, your dong Alvarez, both each hit a bomb tonight against for, for Houston against the Braves. Yeah, no, there you go. Good, uh, good little two man package there. My two favorite hits hitters from Houston. I'm going to the Kansas City Royals. I'm going to one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Even if he doesn't hit you a bomb here tonight, there's likely that he gets you those points one way or another. If he gets on the base pass, he's definitely swiping a bag. I love me some Bobby Witt here, 6,300 shortstop position on my favorite stack, all things considered there. Give me some Bobby Witt. And then my lower owned kind of unowned play is going to be Michael Bush for the Chicago Cubs against Merrill Kelly here. This guy smashes right in pitching, so give me some Michael Bush. Don't mind a little Michael Bush as a one-off contrarian, unknown guy. You could probably get pretty good odds in the betting market there on him. How much – any closing remarks for the people before we get on out of here? No, it should be a good slate. Looking forward to it. Hopefully we see at the top of the leaderboards, Nades, continue crushing it out there. Hope to see another two stacks in your bank account. Won't be the Millie like our board churn, but hopefully we get close, close again to that Millie tonight. Yeah, it won't be the Millie, but hey, I'll take any profit. It's good profit here. Like our guy Churn, single Millie shipper, throw it up one more time. Our guy Kuzmat, Mando in the Discord, and Mark F had incredible Masters weekends over here, along with multiple other winners, myself included, in the MLB streets. Had a great UFC event if you want access to all that and to win with us. One last time, use that promo code HOOP15, all access monthly package. Get access to all sports, including the Discord, including our premium projections and all the tools that do come with it. 
$58 a month, less than $2 a day. Cheapest all-in rate in the industry. No better time to join than now. But that's going to do it here for the Witching Hour show. Good luck tonight in those contests. Hope to see those amazing Ship Nation logos and avatars towards the top of the leaderboard. For Hamwich, I'm Nazify. Let's ship it.